all myself web in our today's session of automated trading we will be continuing to work with the ema crossover and i hope you are well familiar with the ema simply it is a exponential moving average where more weight is given to the recent price action the moving average and uh, in our today's session we will uh, continue our uh, yesterday's developments where we had uh, brought in some initial conditions so in today's session we will uh, be trying to further optimize our algorithm and then build the buy side and the sell side using uh, some uh, other indicators as well if the need be basically i feel we will need to use the atr and if the things call for we might even use a min max and uh, uh, before we proceed i would also like to remind that uh, this is simply a tutorial session and uh, whatever algorithm which we will be developing here i think even if you want to use them on your personal account you should do extensive trial runs and then sufficient amount of uh, mock run on demo account to get a better idea of how these things work and of course no claim is being made regarding the profitability or otherwise of the algorithms which will be developing here and uh, nothing to be constructed as a advice for any trade or any particular setup let's get uh, started so the idea uh, so far has been that we will be looking for a sell trade if the ema 10 has crossed below ema 20 and a buy trade if the ema 10 has crossed above the ema 20 so these are our initial conditions and uh, one more thing is that uh, we will be looking for trade only during the first 10 hours of this uh, crossover so when the crossover happens at 9 gmt on the 5th of march we would have looked for a trade only till 19 uh, 19 gmt and uh, when this uh, crossover happened in a bearish territory on uh, 4 4 gmt of 10th march then we would have continued to look for a sell trade till only 14 gmt so during on the initial 10 hour and um, then now the question arises is uh, when to buy and when to sell because these are the there is this uh, 10 hours window for us to go for a trade and then we will uh, now uh we will uh, look for how to optimize our entry and exit scenario before uh, we go into details i would also like to remind of some instances when this uh, trend chain doesn't uh, hold well for long time and only after few hours we get a reversal in opposite direction so here you can notice that this bearish crossover came and then in just couple of hours the trend change and uh, it started to rise and here on this occasion you are seeing volatile moves only for a couple of hours in the buy zone and then next few hours sell zone again in buy zone and again in sell territory the bearish territory so such things also happen and to minimize our losses in uh, such circumstances when the price action is not uh, showing any clear cut direction and it is kind of sideways then we are going to add one more layer of four hourly ema crossover and uh, that will help us uh, avoid uh, if not avoid at least uh, to some extent minimize our exposure in uh, such volatile times and uh, we will be using this uh, four hourly condition where the underlying theme is same that ema 10 should be above EMA 20 for a buy trade and EMA 10 should be below EMA 20 for a sell trade. So we will be using these as well. So what we will uh, uh, achieve with this uh, condition is that uh, that uh, trend change will also be need to be confirmed on a larger time frame of four hours along with the uh, one hour time frame. So it will act as a better uh, confirmation tool also. as you can see here that uh, fall in euro usd which started at 1.15 lasted till 1.13 but uh, on the larger time frame the trend is still positive so in uh, today's session again we are seeing buying momentum and euro usd has climbed back around 70 to 80 pips from the days low so such things happen and it becomes very really difficult for uh, us to trade only using lower time frame so 
uh, using multiple time frames on the same algorithm is uh, also a good useful idea so let's get uh, started here yeah, this is the development uh, so far we have subscribed to the instrument euro usd so this is standard subscription and the position amount has been assigned to zero so that only when there is no open or pending position on the account the algorithm will look for a, a fresh trade then ema 10 these are uh, set on the hourly all these four emas and the time period is of 10 hours here this is 20 again 10 and again 20 but these are shift 10 so we are using a look back period of 10 hours so when the crossover for the current time is in a particular direction we will also be using this look back time frame to see if the crossover was in the same side on the opposite side a 10 hours back so for that purpose this uh, EMA blocks have been brought in and then this is the EMA of 4 hours for added confirmation on the larger time frame historical candle uh, we are going to employ historical candle to make sure that trade happens only when so see here on the hourly chart uh, our basic idea is that uh, when there is some corrective moves after uh, this crossover and if uh, the price comes back closer to this uh, EMA 10 and EMA 20 and uh, whenever uh, when the underlying trend is in sell side so in such a situation we will be using this uh, candle two hours back to check if it has closed in green and its recent high should be above the EMA 10 and then immediately afterwards the selling pressure should also be coming in and the next candle should have closed in red with uh, uh, the high being uh, above EMA 10 and uh, what it will mean that the, some correction has happened in uh, the price of uh, the underlying instrument and uh, now again the resistance is coming in as it has approached our resistance zone of this uh, confluence of EMAs and again the selling pressure is coming back so once it come closes we will uh, be going for a pending open we will uh, place in the order sell side with a sufficient amount of uh, amount of uh, headroom or you can even say leg room for the power price to oscillate uh, and uh, for that we will be using ATR to place uh, order as close to this 10 EMA as possible and uh, then again we will be providing uh, sufficient enough buffer for uh, prices to move freely and then if the things uh, go as per the plan we will be making decent amount of money so that's the underlying idea so here also you can notice that uh, when the setup is in the buy side we will be looking for a candle which has closed in red with the low being below 10 EMA and then the next candle should have closed in green with the uh, low being below 10 and uh, then we will be placing a pending open with uh, some some subtraction from the current price of around 10% uh, of ATR and then that order will be placed on the lower side and uh, if things go well then our order will be getting executed and uh, we will make a decent amount of money if not then uh, we are of course going to use stop losses and uh, if the stop loss gets hit our uh, algorithm won't be trading again so that's the underlying idea here so let's get uh, started now uh, we have used these uh, calculation blocks also and uh, we have defined the candle close and we have defined this uh, ed1 the value for ed1 has been at uh, 15 pips means uh, that uh, the algorithm will be looking for a trade only when the last candle close is within the 15 pips of uh, the ema uh, ema 10 10 hours ema and uh, if the candle close is beyond that the algorithm won't be looking for a trade so we have defined this optimizing condition just to make sure that uh, too much of volatility shouldn't be there in the price action 
now coming to further optimization we will add uh, the buy and the sell side so let's get to working and uh, we will also need the ATR the average true range for the day and uh, I think first we will need uh, to bring in ATR and try to see if we are sufficient enough on basic conditions momentum I think it is in others yes ATR is in this section we will use the ATR and uh, we will be using the 10% of the ATR as our desired entry point and ATR will be set for the daily time frame so here is the daily time frame shift will be 1 uh, just to make sure that uh, we are only considering the ATR value of yesterday as what happens when the new day starts the initial value is a bit lower as uh, the price action is just getting started to avoid that effect we will uh, set the ATR one period back one day back and the time period is 14 ok now uh, we will need to bring in the calculation expression we need the component mathematical and here is the calculation expression We bring in the ATR value and then we multiply it. We need to create a new variable, the minimum ATR condition, and we put it at uh, 0 0.1, means 10% uh, of the ATR value. So we will uh, use this to define the ATR condition so we save it as uh, A1 oh, sorry A1 into A2 and we will save it as ATR condition A3 so that's it and uh, let me uh, Let's keep it color coded so that we immediately notice if the algorithm flow is uh, happening or not. And uh, we will need to do two more calculations, similar kind. Now, this is uh, candle 19 close minus EMA 13. So, this will be useful for uh, the buy side, but when the algorithm is closing. In the sales side, when the candle closes below the EMA 10, in such circumstances, we will need to reverse the calculation and we will need to deduct the candle close from the EMA. So, for that, we will need to bring in further calculation block. Mathematical, okay, and the calculation block is here. We are going to make sure that even during the sale side, the candle close shouldn't be too far away from the EMA. And uh, for that matter, we want to make sure that uh, EMA 13 is within 15 pips of the candle close so for that we will need to see the hourly candle close shift 1 and that is uh, 
candle 19 so we look for candle 19 close auto created variable candle 19 and the candle 19 close and we will deduct a2 from a1 a1 minus a2 and we will uh, write this difference as uh, cell difference cell size so sd so i think i hope it's good enough we had saved it as ed execution difference now we are uh, entering into the third row that means our algorithm is going to be a bit heavy which might impact our test run duration so i'm not much hopeful if we will be able to do the test run for larger time frame maybe a day or two we will try if it doesn't take too much of a time and uh, now what we need to do further we have made sure that uh, the last candle close is within 15 pips of the EMA uh, so just let me take a look if we are uh, done with the most of the conditions I think we need to define the buy entry and the sell entry also so we will need uh, further calculation blocks and also the order validity time uh, maybe we can keep the order valid for say one hour and uh, of course we will be comparing the last tick price as well to make sure that uh, in case there is too much of an volatile moves then uh, our algorithm is not executing uh, any fresh trades so we are going to need uh, three calculation expression one for the buy entry one for the sell entry and one for the order validity time so here we are doing this for a buy entry we will uh, deduct the 10 percent of the atr from uh, the last tick value and for the sale entry we will add the 10 percent of the atr to the last tick value so that our entry looks a bit optimum and 10% uh, of ATR we have defined it here you can notice that we had saved this condition just a while back and this MATR has been defined at 0 0.1 means 10% and uh, we will now need to bring in the last tick price on tick last tick and the tick ask we will deduct 10 pips from the tick ask so what we are going to do is that we have brought in the last tick tick ask now we are going to deduct the ac oh. okay we will do a1 minus a2 and we will define it as by entry be for the sell side we will add the same 10 pips 10 uh, sorry 10 percent take uh, bead of the 10% of the ATR that will mean that the entry point will be 10 pips 10% uh, of the ATR higher so here A1 plus A2 and it will become SE cell entry I hope you are uh, getting my point why we have done this now here 
we need to bring in the last tick tick time and uh, the tick time is here to tick time we will be adding the 36 lakh ticks 3.6 million ticks and for that we need to create a new variable and uh, 3.6 million ticks means so one hour and we will uh, get in one more uh, variable so suppose if you want to keep the order validity for say 1.5 that is one and a half hour then you can simply multiply that by 1.5 suppose if you want to keep the order validity for two hours then you can simply multiply it by two so whatever time frame you choose is good enough you can uh, keep it like that so here we bring in tt the tick time and we put in 3.6 million so let me make sure that i am not making any mistake here as a mistake can be pretty costly for us uh, it looks like we need one more zero okay so far so good i guess yes we are good and we save it now we bring in the tt we add it to the last tick tick time and we first we will multiply it by one it's not required but uh, just to give you an idea that uh, if suppose if you want to change the time frame for your own uh, particular use then you can multiply it by different so suppose if you want to keep order validity for only half an hour you simply multiply it by 0 0.5 or if you want to make it for more hours you multiply it by that number and we will simply keep it here one ov okay the order validity save and then we add oops tt and the ov okay and we do the calculation a1 plus a2 into a3 and uh, when we get in the pending open order we will uh, put in the time frame variable here okay now let's uh, get back to adding the buy side and the sell side Our algorithm is already looking pretty heavy and uh, building the buy side and the sell side is going to take a lot of time so I'm not sure if we will be able to complete this thing in today's session itself now let's get to building the buy side and the sell side okay so we connect these two the multiple action we keep one row open in case suppose if we want to do further optimization later on we can simply add the indicator block in the space we have left open and uh, we then start uh, adding the entry orders uh, components we will need the logical component first many many a blocks so let's bring in two t at the moment and then we try to first we will uh, build the buy side so let's take the blocks closer to the upper value First condition is that the current crossover on the hourly chart should be in the buy side that is EMA 10 should be above EMA 20 so we put in that as our first condition EMA 10 
greater than EMA 20. So first input is greater than second input. Now we need the 10 years, uh, not 10 years, 10 hours back the crossover should have been in a the opposite territory. So suppose if now it's in the buy mode that uh, the requirement is 10 hours back the crossover should have been in a bearish mode. So we again need to go back 10 hours back, 10 hours back in time and utilize this uh, ship 10 EMAs, the EMA 15 needs to be below the EMA 16. So we put in first condition less than second condition. So these are the requirement on the hourly EMAs. Now we need the four hourly EMA also. And as I said, to minimize the turbulence, we have brought in this one more condition. And uh, we simply add the EMA 17. Oh. The EMA 17 should be greater than EMA 18. This is the current value. There is uh, no change in the shift. Shift is at zero. That means it's the current value. So we have put in all these uh, requirements of the EMA in these three blocks. So let's take them down and put them where they belong on the buy side. On the buy side, we So this is the setup for the EMA requirement. Now we turn to the second row of our indicator and see what more conditions we need. So we need two hours uh, back the candle should have closed in the red and then the one hour back that is the last candle should have closed in uh, green. So again we will need to compare the, the candle close and candle open. We need two if blocks. Let's get uh, to work here. We need, we'll bring in three more blocks at the moment. And uh, to get the data, we will need to go here in auto created variable and see which candle. Uh, first, we will check for candle 20 candle 20 should have closed in red that means the candle close should be below the candle open now we bring in the candle close here and we bring in the candle open here ship 2 that is the candles two are back two candles back and we connect this to make sure that candle close is lower than candle open. It will had closed in red. Now turning to the candle with shift 1, candle 19, we need this candle to have closed, closed in green that means the candle close should be above the candle open candle close should be above the candle open so these are two requirements for the candle close of last two hours we want candle close 
to be greater than the candle open okay let's add these conditions to the buy side now EMA 17 and EMA 18 these were uh, four hourly EMAs and we needed the EMA 10 of 4 hours should be greater than EMA 20 of 4 hours EMA 17 and EMA 18 so the EMA 13 is greater than EMA 14 and the EMA 15 is less than the EMA 16. These are uh, hourly EMAs, 10 hours back, 10 periods back. And then these are current EMA on drawn on the 4 hourly time frame. Okay. Now what we will need further is that the candle close of last uh, hour should be within the 10 pips range and uh, uh, sorry 15 pips range and I think we have already defined that condition so we need to search for it where we have defined it and then we will uh, do the rest of things so let's see where we have defined it this is the 15 pips range and this is the difference between candle close and the EMA and the candle close EMA we have subtracted the 10 hours EMA from the last candle close and if this difference is less than the 15 pips which we have defined here only then the candle should uh, allow the flow and our algorithm will look for the buy trade so we bring in ED here the difference between uh, the candle close and the EMA which needs to be less than the 15 pips which we have defined using this uh, pip size and the ED1 which has been defined at 15 and this will need to be less than the 15 pips so let's bring in one more if condition ED needs to be less Okay, so far so good. Now, for the requirement will be that we will now again need to go back to the chart and see how far we have come in our development and what needs to be done further as we want the algorithm to be developed using best of the conditions. So we will uh, take our cues on what needs to be done from the chart itself and uh, we will observe the charts again and uh, see what further conditioning for what further conditionals to be put in. So we have defined the crossover, the last candle close and the candle close prior to that then we have defined that candle close should be within the 15 pips range we are building for the buy side so let's take a look here so we have defined that last candle close should have closed in green with uh, candle close being within 15 pips so let's check here the line value is at 1.1178 and the candle close is at 1.120 so i think uh, that condition won't have been fulfilled here so all our algorithm wouldn't have gone for any trade but then that's our requirement and it should be fulfilled in most of the condition and also we want the lose for both these uh, 
render the shift 1 and the shift 2 to be below the EMA 10 so we will uh, need to add that condition as well but as I see the time is also running out for us so I think uh, for the day we stop here and then again we come back tomorrow and we will uh, bring in these uh, requirements and further conditions the we will also define the entry values using the pending open and then the order validity is also there for one hour or two hours or for three hours whatever time frame you feel comfortable with so we will uh, take a look on the data on the charts here for sufficient uh, sufficient enough time to see what the chart is suggesting using a uh, historical trend and uh, historical formation and then we will uh, try to put our best foot forward so thank you all for joining in for uh, today's session we will be back tomorrow again see you tomorrow goodbye